The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your Spirit, that we may follow after your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to John, the first chapter, beginning at the 29th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Last week, Pastor Steve brought us a message that was about signs, signs that pointed ancient travelers and us toward a savior of the world who could be found in humble circumstances, a king without any of the trappings, without any of the luxuries that one would expect for a king. The Gospel of John is also a book full of signs, things, events, and people who point to something else. Why? Well, these things and events and people are necessary so that we may come to and grow in faith. It's a rare find these days to, find, to come across someone who is dedicated completely to the success of another without any personal gain involved for themselves. But that is the role of John the Baptist here. From the very first time he appears on the scene, he is calling to people, fellow Jews, to come and be baptized. A ritual washing, but yet completely new, completely different than the washing of atonement. John calls people to repent, to prepare their hearts, to recognize and receive the coming Messiah. John prepares the way and alerts all who will listen for the one who is coming. John's call is to be baptized in repentance, in preparation for another one who he describes as so much greater than himself that he would dare not consider himself fit to untie his shoes. And on this day, the one for whom he has been setting the stage arrives. And not only that, but submits himself to John for baptism and is identified for the first time publicly in a magnificent sign that he is the Son of God. It's Jesus' coming out party, the big reveal, the launching of a new day of hope, restoration, and salvation. As I've gotten to know all of you and hear your stories, I've learned that a majority of you were baptized as babies and have no memory of the event. But on that day, as water was poured or you were immersed, that was the day that you too were publicly identified, claimed, and named by God. You were officially brought into the community of believers where you were welcomed into that place 
and into the communion of saints where you would be nourished and encouraged in your faith. The gift of baptism were, was bestowed upon you, and you were marked with the sign of the cross and claimed as one who would follow the teachings of Jesus for the sake of others. As our funeral liturgy reminds us, we have been baptized into a death like his, and we are promised a resurrection like his. We recall our baptism each time new members are received here at Lord of Life in the liturgy. But I wonder how many of us pause to consider our baptism and the impact that it has here and now. After all, the only memory for most of us is what has been shown to us in a photograph or in hearing the stories passed down by those who were present. How many of us actually stop at the font, either on the way into the sanctuary or as we're leaving, and retrace the cross on our forehead, which was placed there so long ago? What comfort is that to us all these years later, after we've received it before we even knew why? Well, our baptism is a sign It is a sign of connection. It is a sign and a promise that we are beloved of God. We are invited into community. We are meant to wear our baptismal promises every day. We cannot be separated from the love of Christ Jesus. We receive the forgiveness of sins. We are given the Holy Spirit as an advocate, and we begin both our individual and communal journeys in the footsteps of Jesus until the day we are reunited with him. These are no small gifts. We are drawn to the water by signs along the way, as Pastor Steve put it. Even if we were too young to see and remember them at the beginning, There were signs that our parents and grandparents and all of them before them witnessed, which called them to bring us to the water. We need one another for the work of baptismal life. I came across a story the other day that maybe some of you or all of you have heard before, but it describes so well how we are connected in community And it is baptism that does that. There was a pastor long, long ago who noticed that there was a parishioner who was suddenly missing among the worshiping community. This parishioner had come to church faithfully every weekend for years and years and suddenly wasn't there. So the pastor made it a point to show up for a visit at this person's home knocked on the door, and eventually the door was opened and the pastor was motioned in. And he joined the parishioner at another chair seated beside the one where he was sitting in front of the fire. No words were exchanged. Nothing was discussed. No looks of concern or worry. They both sat in silence, staring into the fire. Well, eventually, the pastor reached out and picked up the fireplace tongs and plucked an ember from the fireplace and set it on the hearth. And they both looked as they watched the ember that started out and began with a red, fiery glow. And it was beautiful sitting there by itself. But all alone, it didn't take very long for the glow to begin to diminish. And soon, the ember was out altogether. When the ember had gone out, the the pastor reached out again with the tongs and placed it back in the fire. And they both sat and watched. As the flame was rekindled, the life came back into that dying and dead ember, and it began to glow 
and provide heat into the room again. No words were said. A knowing look was exchanged, and the pastor left the house in the same way he had come, in silence. The next week, the parishioner was back in the pew in worship. We need each other. We need each other to feed our flame, our passion, our calling, our ministries that we serve in this place and out in the world, and we keep one another encouraged. We keep the flame going, the faith burning in one another when we are together. And just as Jesus was baptized to begin his ministry, to begin his communal connection to us, so are we connected to Jesus and to one another in our baptism. In our baptismal promises, we are drenched in the love of Jesus and held close in the joy of that love. It's the foundation of our baptism, which bears us up in times of hardship and sadness and challenge. And our baptism reminds us that we are bound together and strengthened by one another so that our flame of discipleship doesn't slowly fade and die. Baptism is the root of our strength in community whether to weather whatever comes, even change. Change is all around us, in the world today, in our own personal daily lives, and in our life together as the baptized and beloved of God. It's inevitable. We can't avoid it. And change has already begun at Lord of Life. And there will be more to come. But just as John the Baptist cried out in the wilderness that change was coming to the world, he also knew how to prepare the people of his day to be ready. For us, we get to walk in the security of the saints before us who marked the journey and have signaled the way. Baptism is the gift which steadies and anchors us. It reveals and reminds us that God has got us now and in all things to come. In baptism, we live in the promise of grace, forgiveness, and resurrection. And those promises never change. Amen. I invite you to join with me as we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all people in need. Encourage the ministry and mission of the church, God of truth. Let the leaders of your church be trustworthy and accountable stewards, that all its resources and outreach bring hope and healing to communities. God of grace, receive our prayer. Delight in the goodness of your creation, God of fig trees and fertile soil. Heal areas of the world harmed by human greed. Restore those recovering from natural disaster. Protect our forests and waterways and all creatures that live in them. God of grace, receive our prayer. Call the leaders of every neighborhood and nation to serve faithfully, God of wisdom. Give them visions of justice and unity. Lead them to action that promotes equitable partnership and uplifts those on the margins of society. God of grace, receive our prayer. Hold in your care any who suffer and struggle, God of compassion. You who know our inner hearts, be present with any who are oppressed, victims of racism or cultural bias, and all who long for respite or restoration, especially those whom we name now. God of grace, receive our prayer. Give this congregation the anticipation and excitement of Samuel, so inspired and empowered to do your work in the world. God of unity, make us faithful as we build communities of inclusion and mutual care. And this weekend, we remember the ministry and leadership of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. God of grace, receive our prayer. Trusting God who raised Jesus and will also raise us in spirit and truth, we remember all who have died and who are at peace among the saints, especially Dr. King, whose faithful advocacy for peace and justice continues to embolden the church. God of grace, hear our prayer. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. <laughs>